I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community-produced video from the Foundation. This is Episode 2. We've got Meegs and Rob with us here today, and we're going to talk about some fantastic topics like the having that's coming up. We'll talk about some of our use cases and the DAO. How's it going, guys? Hey, it's guys. It's going great. Happy to be here. Again, yeah. happy to be back, too. <laughs> yeah, it feels like we were just here just a couple of weeks ago, and we were. <laughs> That's right. But now you notice maybe you can hear me. I oh, hope. yes, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> you I, got a new yeah, microphone. I, did. I bought a new microphone. I hope everybody can hear me now. Uh, you can see the other uh, improvement we have is like, well, well, we'll see if it's an improvement. We have uh, this <laughs> yeah. video part now. We all did pretty uh, close resemblance to ourselves. I think I'm the worst because you all have seen me. This is as good as I can make me. And Neegs and Voice, you're, you guys are damn close to your real, real life versions i have to say I, I feel like it's like an older version of me but a much thinner version of me yeah so i i can look at that and i can say well yeah i could see that maybe in 20 years or so but uh yeah so yeah, i it just is. feel like it looks Very older. professorial the, Neeks, yep. you, that's spot on that's yeah it. I actually, anybody who's wondering what he looks like that's what he looks like <laughs> yeah i don't have to take any credit here i did that from a picture i found an, an app that was allowing me to do that and so yeah it's definitely pretty close like this avatar looks younger than i am but yeah that's yeah, still pretty close <laughs> you guys can tell us if this is corny you don't want to do this us to do this again but this is probably what we're going to do if people like it or don't say anything at all so let us know well it's hard because we're streaming and connecting from I mean, it's decentralized. We are literally worlds apart from each other, sometimes hundreds or thousands of miles away. And so getting that quality for video, especially Rob, some of you have, have seen the, we're not picking on Rob, but the quality of his video as it comes out, not that great. Um, I've never so had a reason to upgrade my computer, my camera, my microphone, none of those things. So. First, I'm doing the mic. Next <laughs> time we do this, I'll have a better camera. Next time, maybe I'll even have a better computer. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> All right. So you guys let us know if you think this is a good idea or not. I think it's kind of hokey. You may like it. You may enjoy it. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but um, it's fun. It was. It's something different for us. So. <laughs> Yeah, we're trying. We're trying. We'll see. We'll see if that yeah. works. Otherwise, uh, we'll just get back to audio. Exactly. Exactly. We got market outlook. We got some really crazy yeah. things going on right now. Let's talk about that. This has been two weeks since we've been doing this, uh, since we did this last time. And we didn't really talk too much about the market last time. We didn't talk about ETFs. And I know the kind of the whole Twitter space has talked about ETFs, but now it's, we have some hindsight we can kind of look at and kind of have some ideas of, of what we think those are, how those are affecting or what else is affecting Bitcoin at the moment. I have my opinion. Do you guys want to speak up on that? For sure. So something I've said since early March is that you have Bitcoin cycle that for now have always been something that we can really rely on. And what we see um, actually every time is that you have the bear market, Bitcoin goes down, and then once it starts to recover, it goes back to the all time high. And then after that, it has some kind of hesitation before actually consolidating for months before attacking the actual new all time high that we're all waiting for. And some speculation came about ETFs being able to have some major impact on that cycle, uh, potentially avoiding this whole consolidation phase, uh, going way up. But in reality, we don't really know uh, what it will bring. It does open the market to some new actors, obviously. However, we don't really know how they will stabilize the market or if they will increase the volatility. I know you also have some uh, pretty strong opinion about that, Rob. So what do you think about those things? <laughs> I don't think they're earth shattering. I just think that we have now opened the market to people who don't want to get into crypto. Um, yeah. So, yeah. and people like, like I have uh, IRAs um, and now I can put those IRAs into crypto sort of right through the, through the ETFs and the ETFs need to buy and sell according to what their clients are buying and selling. So when I buy, some of whatever ETF that is Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin ETF, they got to buy some Bitcoin. 
So now there's lots of people who have access to the, the, to affecting the Bitcoin price and lots of people who are not like crypto people who are not used to the way it's volatile. And honestly, yeah. I, I think there's going to be a lot of people who are scared. And when the price goes down, like we're used to price going down, you know, 20% <laughs> and we're like, yeah, it'll be we have a roller later. coaster. Yeah. You know, these people are terrified when something drops 3%. And yeah. so what I, what I think is we're going to see more volatility as we go forward, not less, as the ETF market becomes a larger part of the overall Bitcoin ownership. I, um, I, I like right now, it may not be so much. Yeah, I, th I think that the ETFs um, will create more volatility. Uh, I think that that's... Well, again, everything we're stating is speculation. There are those yep. who will state that it's going to bring stability. And I just cannot for the life of me see that happening, knowing how those markets work and knowing how um, the crypto value is still very emotional, right? Um, so the speculation is based upon that emotion. And those kinds of uh, you would call them no coiners, I guess. Those kinds of people who are not really involved in crypto, who may want something part of their portfolio, who have sort of to build the stomach for this kind of a market, uh, mm -hmm. for lack of a better yeah. statement, yeah, right? I, I mean, you got to you got to get used to that roller coaster, and it also isn't necessarily, in my opinion, really bringing people who are wanting to know more about crypto and the freedoms it brings obviously i'm sort of the purist here um in 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 the bunch and if you're participating in anything on paper whether it's gold on paper or whether it's silver on paper or whether it's bitcoin or for that matter if it happens ethereum on paper that's all it is it's just paper you don't really have the asset you don't I, even I understand or respect the asset yeah, I, I just heard you say something that just reminded me of another thing I just saw. I don't know if you guys saw this, but somebody lost everything. In his tweet, he was saying, you know, I've been in crypto since whatever date. Maybe it was 2017. Maybe it was 2015. I don't know. Yeah. But he had lost all his money because he got liquidated gambling with Pepe coin. Uh, and I'm like, I'm like, you're not in crypto. That's correct. <laughs> you know, you're yeah. right. So <laughs> there are people who play around with crypto and are not invested into this becoming a thing, understanding how it works. They're just gambling with crypto on an exchange, just like anybody else is speculating here and there. I mean, he's been doing it with crypto. And I just, I mean, the guy got liquidated. Yeah. And like, that's something you can avoid. It was hard for me to understand that he literally lost everything. Later, he said, he, I think it was Binance was nice to him and helped him a little bit. But yeah, that's the difference between kind of being in crypto, the way we understand it, the way actually I think most people who are in crypto understand and what I'm nervous about the ETF market being. I do think though, as the overall adoption of owning some crypto or owning Bitcoin gets huge, like we're not yeah. even close to that yet. It gets huge. I think that's when we start seeing stability, not, not now. <laughs> yeah, it's all about use case, right? That's mm -hmm. the key thing. The more use case we have and the more adoption along with that use case, along with that ownership, along with those speculators, along with those day traders, because that's kind of what what I see when I hear that is people playing in those markets. They're not really in the market. They're just wanting to get in, ride the gains, and then get out into fiat or turn it into something else to get out into fiat when we have more utility features and functions uh, along with all of those things, because those people are still part of crypto. We should still welcome them as part of crypto. Uh, they'll always be part of crypto. It's just not maybe where I am in crypto and you guys are different. But anyway, it's all about other functions, features and utilities, not just ownership. Yeah, so you actually introduced the topic that I wanted to go back to, because in fact, this is what's paradoxical in that situation is that you want to have Bitcoin adoption. You want people to use more cryptocurrency for mm -hmm. their day-to-day -day -day transactions. But in reality, uh, most people will never go through the hurdle of you know, managing a Bitcoin wallet and all that. And Bitcoin is all about sovereignty over your funds and over uh, your transaction, the network as a whole. And these ETF are the opposite of that, right? Yeah. But in a way, exactly like 
the fiat on ramp or off ramp it is something that is that is required for normal people to actually uh, get totally. in contact with bitcoin um, yeah yeah in reality, yeah. as long as you have to see that now you're using a different technology and you're not just getting the benefits of being sovereign, it will be a difficult path for a lot of people to actually embrace crypto. They'll feel the risk. They will see it's not as easy as the other apps that they have. And so getting some intermediary steps like that, that's a path where every technology matures. It has to go through that. Tons of new ideas come and most of them are garbage, yeah. right? But then some of them will succeed and they will be close to the original technology. So things that will be a lot closer to Bitcoin, things that will still be trustless operations and all that, basically the direction that we want to develop, right? And then you will have other things where they try to get closer to the fiat system, right? Yeah. And ETFs is exactly that. Yeah, I, I think it's an overall good. I mean, I think in our goal of people, I and mean, when I said adoption before, I sort of meant just holding, even if it's by proxy, like yeah. just people being aware, holding some, having some, even by proxy. It's not, I don't mean actually using it for stuff. I just mean like it'll settle out at some point when it's just normal to have some Bitcoin, you know, like it was normal to have some IBM before or whatever, maybe NVIDIA now, you know? <laughs> so um, I think, I think we'll see it then. Um, we also have the the having coming up. I mean, literally in what three days? Two, two three days. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's, yeah, it's yeah, literally. So people are excited. Right around the corner. Um, <laughs> I'm excited. I just I'm excited only because it's like, you know, it's another milestone that we're passing. Like it's like this is the fourth one, I think. And yeah, yeah. And uh, yay, Bitcoin's lasted this long. And we'll get, I mean, and there's nothing stopping it. I mean, nothing it's amazing. It. I think it's I, awesome. I think the the funniest thing is is. And I know you guys have read some of the articles, but uh, there was an article, and it could have been a hoax, but uh, from what I read, it looked pretty real. But even in some media in Europe, the understanding of what it actually means to have a halving, um, I, we've heard, I, I've read things, again, you have to <laughs> discern yeah, the differences. Yeah, I saw one too. <laughs> yeah, that the Bitcoin supply is going to be worth double, which is a strange thing to hear. And and in other cases, I think we've seen and heard, and you guys have, may have seen some, but somebody said they were going to burn half the supply. Oh, um, yeah. I've seen all sorts of things that are almost entirely comical, and they're coming from news media. These are supposed to be the experts, and they're coming from what some people would title influencers. Uh, maybe that's a, a comical term for some who would profess to being in crypto and actually say they're going to burn half the supply unless they've been into uh, fiat type tokens where they just mint stuff automatically. But yeah, that's just, yeah, it's saw, comical. My, the one I saw was an influencer and it's one of the dude in a car or woman in a car, you know, that, that kind of trope for mm -hmm. talking to you on YouTube or whatever, TikTok, but it was a dude in the car and he was just like, it's great. They're going to they're gonna take or they're going to get rid of, you know, half the Bitcoin. And half the Bitcoin. I'm sitting there like, like, I, I, how would you even do it? <laughs> like, who's yeah. doing that? You want to give up half your Bitcoin? I mean, <laughs> it was so weird. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's all right. I mean, people, yeah. people don't know. I think the, the biggest yeah. thing is, is that they're talking about it. They're talking about it. They're talking about yeah. it. And you have a lot of speculation and everybody, and every time I might say, the, because I've been in crypto for a while, as I know you have, Rob, every time this happens, everybody thinks, well, the miners get half, therefore it's going to pump the price up. And right. I think historically, if we just go back over coin market cap, historically, that just does not happen. It, it, it does affect long-term. Um, yeah. But in the short term, no. And in fact, I think over the last one or two, and, and I didn't read up before I got on this, but I, as I recall from memory, it was exactly the opposite. We see a drop. Yeah. A drop. But, yeah. I looked you know. at, uh, I actually, because I was in a conversation with somebody today on this. Mm -hmm. So I looked at the last three. One yeah. of them dropped. One of them rose. Uh, one of them actually rose faster and sooner. Mm -hmm. um, and, but all of them, like almost nothing happened the day of. 
And so the one that dropped and then started rising, that took a couple of months. And the one that stayed about the same and then started rising, that was almost four or five months. So like right. yeah. having doesn't do Up something. Up to 11 months for, I yeah. think, the last last cycle, right? To the peak, right? Yeah. Almost yeah, yeah. to the peak, yeah. Exactly. Um, so the, the having itself doesn't do something. There, there's some mechanics that probably smarter people than me understand that cause that delay. It's happened every time. I don't see a reason why it wouldn't happen this time. But uh, yeah, the expectation that all of a sudden it's going to be awesome. Um, I mean, it's going to be awesome, but not all of a sudden. <laughs> Yeah. I think yeah. I think we're all speculating that it will be. Yeah. Right. So the thing is that there is some truth to that. There is that part where we can see historically, exactly like you mentioned, Rob, there seems to be a timing where after the halving, and it's not directly after, but there seems to be some impact on that. And we can talk about why, right? Because the reality is to be able to generate a block for Bitcoin, you're still using the same energy. And now yeah. all of a sudden you get rewarded half to generate your Bitcoin. And so if now Bitcoin is supposedly twice more expensive than it was before because of the halving, right? So this is what is pushing the speculation behind it. The other comment I wanted to say is about the influencers and news media. One thing that's interesting is that whenever you see those actors talking about something you know, most of the time they're wrong, right? <laughs> like if you totally. actually are knowledgeable Absolutely. about the topic they bring, you will see that there are so many inaccuracies. Yep. And I think it's also due to their job, right? Their job is not being an expert of those topics. Yeah. They mostly read like a few articles. They had just a short time to look into that. And then, and, and obviously they're not a source of uh, information. They're, no. they're more like a funnel. They, yeah. they reach people with like the base information. But if you actually want to have information, you have to move to other sources, look to more detailed article. And it does require some, some energy, right? Like you, yeah, it's, you really it's have interesting. To spend that time. You say this, this is exactly what we, I used to work in fuel cells. This exact thing happened. The science reporters didn't understand the technology and would literally report to the world the wrong thing. And Michael Crichton actually had a quote about this, which I'm not going to say verbatim, but really, if you're expert in something, whatever you're expert in, and then you go read the news on whatever you're expert in, you'll find the news, as you said, just wrong. Yeah. And so why watch do a movie you trust the news on any other subject? <laughs> it's always yeah. wrong. It, you know, for the experts in that subject, it's wrong for them too. It's really yeah. kind of, our brains don't really work that well when it comes to reading stuff. It just feels true because somebody wrote it. But you know, for you, it's wrong. <laughs> exactly. So, right. It's really a strange thing. If we go full circle and, and talk about this, we talk about adoption and crypto and Divi is crypto made easy. We talk about these, these conversations that um, take time to learn, just like having self-custody where we state today, well, people don't want to do that. That's a snapshot in time. It's an in-the-moment statement. And if we look out over history and we look at technological changes, we look at um, mediums of value transfer changes, even the last 150 years, how it's dramatically changed. Um, I think it's. I think. I think we just can't say people won't do something that they should do in the future. It's about education and information and knowledge sharing, and this is exactly the same point when we talk about these these changes and these moments that are. We could say that they're historical. They they mean something of value, at least for for the ecosystem. Um, if you do take the time and ask questions and learn, you can discern the wheat from the chaff, right? I think that's really what it comes down to. You can take stewardship in your own journey, right? In, in learning this, and then you can share that with others. I think that's probably what I would say. Yeah, you definitely have to do the work. And uh, it may not be much work, just you know, be skeptical and then go find the right answers. Uh, right. Ask the smart people. I ask people smarter than me on every subject I want to know more about, you know, get lots of opinions. It's, it's uh, a great way to go about it. Some other stuff we want to talk about. This is, I think, where we can talk about the Dow, right? Yeah, go ahead. I think that Dow should be Rob since Dow is Rob's right. baby. 
Oh God. Yeah. I, I, I still want it to not be, but yeah, I'm still Just don't sound negative. At the, I'm not <laughs> negative about it. I love that we have it. I wish I started it way earlier. I wish someone started it way earlier mm -hmm. and I wish we were way further along with it, but you know, we got to do these things one at a time and, you know, work with what we have. And so yes, about a year ago, a little bit less, I think we made it possible for people to vote on various aspects of what we're doing with Divi. Mm -hmm. Um, most of that voting was designing a DAO. So all it was, was basically, if you have a single Ethereum based Divi, because I can only implement this stuff on Ethereum for now with the tools that are out currently, there yeah. for, yeah, currently, if you have a single one of those, then you are qualified to vote. And then we basically had a bunch of votes on what the DAO governance model should look like. I think we had 12 or 13 votes on that. Um, there's a blog post on what the end result of all of those votes were, what the governance model looks like. So if you're interested in this, that's what we're shooting for. And right now, um, we're still trying to get it so that we can have a website that implements that model. Um, mm. Once we have it, we won't need the Ethereum coined uh, tokens. It will be Divi native, and it will be a place where nothing is funneled through me, uh, where people who are qualified and va validated can just propose on their own, vote on their own, and, you know, build a, a support on their own, like all of that stuff can happen like a real DAO. Uh, and it, that part of it will be super nice. Uh, right now I am the gatekeeper and I don't want to be, I mean, I push through whatever I can, uh, make sure people have thought through their whole, their whole proposals so that you they guide can get them. up there. I'm sorry. I guide them as much as I can. And I do ask that they write the whole proposal. So if you want to do a proposal, you know, you go to the discord, the DAO section, you can download the template, make sure you fill that thing out fully. That means to me that you've thought about it, the whole thing, and then I'll get it up there. So I am the, yeah, the conduit by which it happens. And I'm hoping not to be, it's not a lot of work. It's just not right. You know, and I, so, yeah, that's <laughs> here is the thing, right? Why I agree that it would be great to have a more a decentralized, <laughs> yeah. you know, a decentralized DAO, which yeah. is the D of DAO. But the thing is that I think you're doing a good job. It is difficult to migrate from the kind of structure that we had to a working DAO. I understand that there are also timings, right? Sometimes when you try to integrate those things to the community, it's a better timing than others. Sure. Here, yeah. we, we're conscious of the situation and it is fine for us to make sure that this transition happens properly. So we'll be here until the DAO is able to, to take off, right? Until then, we will be assuming that role. Uh, we'll be making sure that those things move forward. We'll also be proposing some, some new initiatives. So I can actually list some. I don't know if we want to talk about that now. Um, well, I, I just wanted to add that I know we speak about it as a new thing. It's not a new thing. It's in the white paper. It goes back now. What is that? Four, five, six, six seven years? years ago. Oh my God. The, the master nodes were supposed to be uh, instrumental in voting and the DAO. The only reason we are here where we are is because two and a half years ago, uh, without going too much in depth into it, because we have the articles that everyone should read, the realization from random string was that the master nodes weren't stable and that they needed to be upgraded to something more powerful right and so that's why we have vaults today and the vaults will take the place of voting on the dow like the master nodes um were supposed to so the dow isn't a new thing the dow isn't something that you just created this is this is a an honoring of the original philosophy and plan for everything that I would say that I got involved with. I mean, this is where it's going. So yeah, I think that's- And the governance right. model actually reflects that. The governance Correct. model kind of uses the ideas of how the, to work. We're just doing it with the vault validators now instead. The other thing you said was like, uh, DAOs aren't new. They're not, they've been around for a long time. The very first Ethereum one called, you know, the DAO. Of course, of course. <laughs> um, but it's amazing how communities can really affect stuff. Like for our community, I was blown away at the market making effort. That was rock solid. Mm -hmm. That brought us a livelihood on our KuCoin exchange, keeping right. us there, not putting us in danger of anything. It was, that was a super great effort. 
dog with hat has now raised seven hundred thousand dollars to put the stupid dog with hat sorry that's my opinion <laughs> uh, dog with hat on the vegas dome so Fear, yeah uh, this is fear. all community efforts and it's all over the place in every project and we've done it here before we did it even when we were helping those kids with the bikes i don't know i don't know that's if correct community remembers all of that but that was right. awesome that was community great. we raised tons of money that way yeah, we so did, Ryan. This is just going to create a nicer way to do it. It's not just like Joe Dude's website to raise the funds. It'll be a little bit, you know, it'll be more decentralized. It'll be more integrated with our community. That's what really what we're trying to do with the DAO. And so far towards that, now I've made another website. Well, I've made a website because I haven't made the DAO website yet. It's designed to keep track of the funding efforts. So it's just called Divi DAO Efforts. There's a link in the Discord for it. We can post other ones all over the place. But that website, basically every single time we have a funding effort, I'm just going to put it there. So there's two there now. Richard's box wallet, front end, you know, make it pretty thing. Uh, that was fully funded. That's up there. It's just, you know, to see that something works. That's awesome. The DAO for the DAO website, that's up there. Uh, to implement our governance model, to get a website everybody can just go to, propose, vote, all that kind of stuff. And then we've got some stuff coming down the line. We're going to vote on these in the DAO. If there's alternatives, we're going to pick one. Uh, if there's alternative pathways to something, we're going to pick one and vote on that in the DAO. And then the funding effort will go on to this other website. So for example, we're talking about new exchanges. We're talking about uh, market making. Uh, Neeks, you want to talk about, you're a little bit more into that yeah, than I am. You want to talk right. about those? Yeah. So one thing that's important to understand about this DAO website that's currently here, it's really a placeholder. Yes. We've yeah. been asked if uh, we could accept more currencies. So we will look into that. Um, it is a bit complicated to create all the wallets and all that within the right structure. But I think, Rob, you're working on that. However, yep. the thing that I wanted to bring is we didn't propose any other opportunities beside that DAO website because we really thought it could be a good thing to have that website built. However, we don't want this to block the progress. And I wanted to highlight the thing that you just said about Doug we've had and their successful raise of $650,000 for some advertising. I think this really relates to the <laughs> momentum that I was talking about, right? Those users had a major raise and so they were able to rally and then go for for more things. I mean, we understand yeah. that currently it's not the best timing where people want to engage a lot and, and we understand that. And that's why we keep moving forward. And you were reminding us the bike, the bike situation. I think there were also paintings. Um, it was extremely, oh, yeah. uh, some really great initiatives that were, that were achieved. And also we can all remember Ramos who was helping people in, in Venezuela, right? So it was really That's interesting right. and you can, you could see that the community yeah. at that time was a lot more willing to participate. Participate. And there is no doubt it was all related to, you know, market price. And that's the situation. As long as sure. the price will not recover, it is like that. So we will keep moving forward. And now we want to propose some more alternatives in those proposals. So we'll come with market making for Bitru. So that would be about the same cost, $24,000. Um, and then it will be in parallel with uh, other proposals. So we'll not just target one and then they will move forward at the pace they need. If we actually get to those targets, we will start to apply the strategy to make sure those proposals move forward. Anyone can propose anything. Don't hesitate if you have a contact with an exchange, a contact with a marketing company. So let me give you a little bit of context on that. We'll soon propose you a vote on multiple different plans that we prepared with some marketing companies. You will be able to vote. You will not be able to know the marketing company. They will remain anonymous with their codes. Uh, you will only know when they will be selected. And then you will be able to vote for different services and different price. And then we can have a collection for those things too. There is a listing for MEXC. That's a bit expensive, but again, those collections can last over a month. And then we have also some ideas to cover uh, some of the founding. One of these ideas would be to actually create a DAO store. So maybe you guys want to talk about the DAO store? Yeah, sure. Actually, you can. I think that's been your baby for a while, but we just think it'd be nice to have a place you can buy stuff. Uh, and then the, that helps also fund the DAO. Uh, plus, you get stuff that you want. It could be swag. It could be other things. We're working on making it so that uh, we don't need a bank account for it. That's, yeah. uh, it limits what we can do and it limits what, we, what can be sold in the store. But 
that's the path we're going. I think that'll be a fun thing. You know, you'll get cups and t-shirts and stickers and that kind of stuff on there. But maybe with time, we can figure out how to expand it uh, into other things. And so maybe part of the community can sell and some of the proceeds go to the DAO. That kind of stuff to help fund the DAO, to help it pay for some of these other things. I just want to remind everyone, when we speak about the DAO, this is about the community helping community and driving the project, driving awareness driving availability this is the community so i mean it's it's all of us working together to make um awareness and opportunity for divi greater and i think that's what the dow is all all about especially uh, as we keep moving forward it'll just get easier and easier and easier we're just on the proto down now until it yeah. becomes something so everything yeah. whether it's the store or whether it's just straight um through the DAO itself. It's it's for the community, by the community, of the community, for Divi. You guys want to move on? Because there's another huge topic oh, well, that is super yeah. important to our progress. I mean, we, there, there's Divi Labs and there's also us here kind of help igniting things to push forward. The other thing that we are working on really hard is pushing forward on side chains. It's the future. I believe if we could really go down deep into it, I would love to. Uh, we are working with a partner on this one. But the key here is we talk about using Divi and one of the problems with UTXO type blockchains, of which Bitcoin is one, it's hard to get utility out of it than being something like you pay somebody for something that happens off chain, right? Like yeah. that's basically what the issue is. You The trust happens at the second part after the payment. And so... The utility of other chains, in particular Ethereum, Polygon, and those kinds of things, we would like to have in a you know in a trustless way attached to the Divi chain, and that's what side chains are, are providing us. Um, you could just do you know an EVM like Ethereum as a side chain to Divi, but it's not really important and it's not really useful. All you just get is everything, all the crap on one chain. What's more interesting is to have dedicated chains that do things. And that's yeah. what we're really trying to get at with this thing. And once you have an idea of a dedicated chain, it could be a smaller chain or whatever, doing something for the main chain. Now you can do anything on that. And that's where all this future utility for Divi is coming from. That's really what I wanted to hit yeah. on there. <laughs> a little bit of insight into this conversation of side chains. For those of you listening, we did have a call before this that went on about three hours about side chains. And the one thing that I want to underscore is... Is that that you didn't record? The, is, well, is that I didn't record. <laughs> no, that wasn't recording that one. Uh, that was a different one. Um, now I'm getting teased. Uh, the, the fact is that we were arguing about utility use cases and it wasn't for lack thereof. It's because there's so many use cases that it was almost, it was an overflowing cornucopia of what's possible for side, side chains and their use cases. And I think that was what I was mentioning just, you know, a few months back when we were on spaces with Renuk on there is that the, the, the phrase or the, what I was using, the statement is utility, utility, utility. Once this is in place, it is mind blowing what is possible for us and improves upon crypto. I think that's what I would yeah. state. That's right. And one thing, what's important to uh, go ahead, Nix. Yeah. Sorry. So what's important to take into account is that those side chains are not your random side chains that you have on other on other infrastructure. We talked about that the last video. Yeah, you can you can go back and watch um, if you if you missed that. But those side chains enable not only Divi but any other blockchain to be able to leverage those services. So it really connects Divi with other yeah. communities with other coins, and it enables Divi. So we can talk about some specific use case, but. A lot of those dedicated sidechain for DV, they will be using DV for fees, right? And they allow the expansion of the DV ecosystem far beyond what the UTXO model is capable of. And also yeah. it protects the actual layer one and the security of the UTXO blockchain. And also it's lightweight. This is also something we highlighted last time for us and for random string, it is really critical. The core remains lightweight that it remains accessible for everybody. 
it's very important that this technology, again, it's, it is a difference compared to what you can see with other mean coins and other centralized offerings, which again are great and do provide a great offering for the market. But we really value the fact that people can verify their own transactions, take part in their own network. For us, it is a base on all the models that we will be moving forward with, including the side chains, right? It is very important to us that this system can scale, which again, it can only scale through side chains. If you look at situations like Ethereum or even Bitcoin with the ordinals, you can see that whenever you actually have some real usage, the network is actually not following. Now you have insane fees, nobody can really use it. With Solana, the system even stops. So you can see that while those systems are extremely powerful, they cannot scale the whole economy, the normal economy into blockchain if you don't have a new approach, which is basically what our partner is coming with. The, the technology yeah. that they're coming with enabled that transition. And at Divi, we're lucky to be the first one to integrate this technology and some of the use case. Maybe we can talk about some of the use case of this technology directly, right? Sure, sure. Yep. Actually, before we do, I want to just mention one more thing because we've been talking about sidechains for a long time. And what's important to understand is that we will talk about use cases. We'll talk about how it's different than the current way crypto is done. But I just want to make sure that it's understood that this is not coming out tomorrow. The way I think about it is when Ethereum came out, nobody knew what to do with a world computer. And it took years for people to figure out like, hey, let's do a token. <laughs> and so, and then that became super popular in the next round. We're sort of at the beginning there. The way sidechains are implemented this way is different than the Ethereum Polygon system, uh, where you're just offloading stuff onto Polygon, but it's essentially the same thing. It's different than the Cosmos universe over there. It's different than all of those things because it's a better way to do the whole thing and it makes everything a little bit more fair. And all of these things that I'm saying are things that we can discuss in the future as to how it's more fair, how it's better, all those things. It's just, it's a fundamentally different way. And we're really early in, in, implementing yeah. this and we're lucky that our partner is the one that's taking us along for this ride here as for use cases let's talk about one <laughs> let's just start with one a dex is a good one so you could have a side chain connected to many other main chains that dex is truly decentralized because there's a bunch of nodes and it's actually bonded to these other main chains there's not you don't have to trust somebody who wrote the smart contract correctly yeah the DEX sidechain would actually be a real DEX and not a smart contract yeah. on another chain right. that you have to buy tokens for or pay gas for. Like that's the difference. It will truly be connected mm -hmm. to the chains that it is exchanging between. So <laughs> Neeks had a yes. Neeks had a sound effect when he was speaking. It was so important what you were saying, Neeks. You had music playing in the background. Wow. Yes. Yeah. I, feel, I wanted to highlight I feel that. More my, empowered. It was, I, I, I right. raised my you up. My message has that, been empowered. That was perfect. Anyway, sorry about that. You're actually saving me time for the shorts. <laughs> I'm saving you time. Nice. Yes, yes, exactly. I just need to send you the <laughs> music again. So, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> to talk about the DEX, the DEX is a very interesting thing. And even if it sounds like the most obvious target that you would want to create with a side chains, in fact, it's one of the most complicated. It right? is. Being able to yeah. support multiple assets, being able to proceed transactions for all those assets, have multiple liquidity pools on it. But it is one of the targets that we want to have. And again, as this is all done through our partners, uh, our partner have a large portfolio of objectives for those side chains and DV will be integrated in all of them. That's extremely interesting. So the DEX is one thing, but then we have multiple other options. And one of the things that's really interesting is the capability to decentralize the revenue that's being generated currently by uh, single entities or just a few entities that capture billions of dollars of market. And now instead of that, with the side chains, we have the capability to redistribute that or change the way the service is rendered to put that now on the back of the validators. And now validators can provide this service and earn money while the customers can connect to those validators through the sidechain. So it's really interesting. There are several applications of that. 
decentralized data providers, situation like Infra, Block Cipher and all that, decentralized cloud computing, situations yeah. like Amazon and all that. So it is extremely promising. Again, this is a whole ecosystem that we're really talking about. It's not limited to only DV who will remain on its corner and then um, have a large toolbox. We're really talking about being able to create multiple side chains that each host their own service, right? Like a decentralized application, if you will. Yeah. And, and so it is a completely new approach to blockchain services. When we talk about this, we're at Divi 3.0, right? And so somewhere in between Divi 3.0, we'll be at 3.5 and then we'll be, and I'm using rough numbers. I don't have an exact number. Then we'll be at four and four is where we plan. I'm expecting, and you guys can concur, or maybe add to it. If four is kind of where the side chains uh, come into play. Um, the only so. thing that I was going to add besides that little bit of knowledge was the fact that everything that we're talking about sounds super complicated and it is super complicated. And really there is nothing in real trustless crypto that isn't a, a learning journey. And it is also a user experience journey. And one of the philosophies is obviously learning and sharing from my point of view, uh, but making a user experience, but not just the user experience, but from a developer experience, because we want, we want as a community, we should want, it's not just the voice wants, it's this technology cries out for people to build on it. And one of the features and functions in that will be, um, templatization, it will be utility made easy, as easy as, as a complicated crypto can be made uh, for uh, a, a very, very uh, a hard technology. The user experience should be, of course, uh, from that perspective, if you're using wallets, should be progressively made easier and easier, just like what happened uh, early on with Masternode. So crypto made easy doesn't go away crypto utility just comes into play and then people can dream because you just said infura type data sharing uh where light wallets have to use these services all light wallets have to use services infura is just one metamask is another metamask doesn't have its own data it has to get that from an api somewhere that data is shared across all sorts of um apps and That's developers right. and communities um uh, big exchanges uh, uh whether it's you know name brand uh, apps or, or or homegrown apps they need a source of that data and unless those people run their own nodes right and a node for every chain they support that would be the other thing they have to right. get an open API that usually has a fee attached to it. And this, the side chain example of, of an example itself of a, a decentralized uh, participatory involvement from the community supporting these kinds of efforts, it is honoring Satoshi because if you do the work and you're participating, you can have an opportunity to earn. And so that's, that's the one thing that I would add and probably end my thought on right there is that it's more opportunities for, for everyone wanting to participate. Yeah, you just uh, run a node and you're participating in the sidechain. That's the cool part. And in this particular case, you're talking about this inferior competitor. You know, you run a node of two chains, the sidechain and whatever chain you want to connect to, and people need that information and pay you. The fees are how you're getting paid to provide this service. That part of it is much simpler. It I is think. totally simple. Yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah, it's really opening the market, right? You basically have a market that is currently captive by a few major actors because to be able to provide this service, you need a major infrastructure. You need to be able to run dozens of nodes to have the backup, to be able to sustain the amount of requests that you get per second, per hour. And now with decentralizing this whole infrastructure, you don't need to have one person or one company managing this major infrastructure. Now you have hundreds or thousands of 
of people that are running their nodes and that are providing the service and sharing yeah. sharing those fees. And you sharing can imagine in the revenue, that yeah. the cost of that is also going way down because now you don't have, again, a few actors which have this market captive and can put major margins. Now you actually have a very open market where the validators are comp they're competing for the fees of the sidechains. And so, yeah, the, the situation is completely different from what it is now. And it is, again, reproducible in other kind of scenario, not only for data providing, because once again, data providing is something that um, you can imagine in crypto, but it can also be thought about in other places, but also resource sharing, case like folding at home. That is a pretty popular Folding case. It, home, yeah. um, it is a situation where you have a central company or association, and this company is actually linking uh, the ones who need uh, processing power and the one who actually share processing power, right? Now, this company can be replaced with a totally decentralized sidechain yeah. that is actually now sharing the fees from the people who need processing power to the validators who actually are providing the processing power. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, so that's... Yeah. These so, are just ideas. I mean, th these are things that we may, as individuals, ones, want to just see. Billion small. dollar industry every well, time. Well, I mean, I yeah, don't mean to be. Dollar, I'm, not, I'm, I, I'm obviously <laughs> not making a joke like that. I mean, I, I, I understand I because even in my idea of a DEX, you're talking about this. The DEX requires maybe a little bit more, but it requires at least fundamentally the same exact things. In this case, that you're decentralized data service provider has um but what i was going to state whether it's the dow because that was that's kind of a rob thing if we want to state that if the dex is my kind of a thing and a decentralized service provider is kind of your thing i'm not saying those are your things i'm not saying that's my thing just to make it simple that's just three simple ideas of providing services when there are so many, as I stated, that we debated about for hours um, that we can talk about that, that really make changes and opportunities. Wait, we, even, we can even pronounce the magic word of 2024. <laughs> exactly. You know what it is, right? No, I don't know. What, what is it? It's AI. Yeah. Oh, 20, oh, that's oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 2024, yeah. it's AI. Yeah. So yeah. that's something else yeah. that can be, be something done. else yeah. next year. <laughs> yeah. This is something where um, you have to think it's when it gets more complex, right? The sidechains allowing you to now offer different services, each on their own sidechain. You can even think about a sidechain that is leveraging the work of other sidechains. And that's where we were thinking about AI and the yeah. limitations that we can see in the in the current iteration of AI. I mean, it just popped up at the level it is now. And we can see that the way they reach there is centralized companies with a lot of money that are unfortunately following a set of rules. We can see are limiting the capability of AI because it has to follow some public rules. And again, I'm, I'm not going to go into the details of that, but we can <laughs> it's, see that. It's the politics uh, of it. <laughs> yeah, that this kind of technology is is probably going to benefit a lot from having decentralized databases where they could train your own AI and potentially, again, the same thing as I was talking earlier. So cloud computing, right? So some computing power for the AI to work. So of course, this decentralized computing power will most likely not being able to compete in speed compared to the centralized options. However, in terms of processing power, if you just need power to process your protein decoding or actually AI processing, you can definitely imagine some sidechain that would offer this service and connect your own AI to a decentralized storage and a decentralized processing so that you could have a very powerful but decentralized AI. Yeah, I think uh, I like those two examples. There was SETI at home and, and the folding project. And, and people did it voluntarily because it was fun and they weren't using their computer. But I think that kind of died down. And then I saw a project on EOS called Boyd that was monetizing that. So you get coins for letting your computer do any of those projects. And they had a list of them. They categorized them nicely. But the funny part was, okay, you have Boyd coins and now what? With this, you're doing this in the native coin. So it's like EOS. Back then there's EOS and then you earn EOS by doing this. And in this context, on a side chain, the thing you're earning is Divi or the thing you're earning is whatever main chain this technology is connected to. 
that's the cool part. Like, you don't, there's not new, a new coin for this, but you earn something that you can be using somewhere else on a different side chain. All of a sudden, the thing you earn is actually usable somewhere else. And that's a huge difference. And I think those kind of programs for side chains is a great, great uh, use for them. Yeah, exactly. I agree. So those are all things, kind of some examples. Uh, when we say you can use a sidechain for anything, like if you can think of a smart contract that does something, that's what these sidechains can be doing, except there's more people involved with earning, supporting, building on it, all of those things. It's a better system. So that's where we are going. And as far as I know, we are unique in this, in this pathway. Um, exactly. And that's one of the things I love about being on this project. Trustless. That's right. And we will keep coming with more details about the uh, use case in the future with more videos. We actually intend to, <laughs> we actually brought multiple use cases in that video. The yeah. intention was to bring just one. So we'll try to stick yeah, to that job. for the next ones. <laughs> like, yeah, let us know what you think about the new presentation that we were trying with those avatars. I mean, <laughs> honestly, we're kind of having fun. So let us know. Exactly. I think it's hokey, but if you like here, it, I'll keep here, doing I'm gonna it. Bow. There you go. You got to <laughs> bow. I, I, I think that's uh, that's the main thing. You're right. It, and it, yes. it reflects back what I was saying about what we were talking about earlier. You said we talked about several different ideas. We were only intending to speak about one. If that gives you any idea of the excitement that we have about the opportunity that we think is coming, about the development that's coming, it's pretty freaking amazing what this is going to be capable of we got to get there it's got to be built you have to hopefully mm -hmm. i would you should be inspired to participate in things like the dow there's still things that we're building it's still active but man it's hard to contain the enthusiasm or the ideas that we have that can happen that's that's just it's just i can't say more I, I keep laughing because when you're talking, your your left eye twitches. It's because I'm. <laughs> yeah, it, it's I think it, I'm blinking normally. I think is picking up my camera, and it's just picking up. One, I'm winking at you. What I? Yeah, you're winking, me, but it looks like. An let me see if I stick. look. I'm going to close my. <laughs> I'm going to close my right eye. What what comes up? See, look, I close my. Yeah, close your left eye. Now, if I close my left yeah. eye, oh yeah. So yeah, I don't know what it's doing. <laughs> I have a tick. Anyway, I have sorry. A tick. We're, we're getting used to this stuff. Uh, we'll see how this goes. Yeah. <laughs> I have a tick. When I talk, it does. Let me it. think about it. This is the think about no. it position. Yeah. No, I'm <laughs> bizarre. I'm good with not doing it, but if we, if everybody yeah. likes it, we can continue. Yeah. <laughs> I still like uh, what happens when I sit down. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So oh, during the, yesterday's recording that you you would not see because we actually didn't record, it, it happened a couple times. So it was it was a yeah. Thing. <laughs> yeah yeah. So so that was the whole the whole joke is that um, yesterday we did record one, and you know I was the one who kind of got on Renuke a couple of times for not recording, and sure enough, who does the no recording this time? Yep, the that's voice. <laughs> so I think I think that's where we leave you with is. So if you have questions, make sure you do fill out the feedback form that we post. Uh, look, we lost Neegs. Make sure you fill out that form where you post um, your feedback, your questions, your ideas. Fill that out if you need that. Make sure you ask in Discord. A quick reminder: Rob put a lot of work into the DAO articles um this is all about our participation and just take a look and, and review them jump into the dow community ask questions about the dow find out how you can participate i encourage you to if you also want to build apps on divi i'm helping people do that right now there's there's a few different apps that are going to come out that will be built specifically on divi and um, I'm working through those with some uh, developers at this moment in time. And uh, yeah, so there's all sorts of things happening. And so we also awesome. want to invite you because last time we did that. And in fact, we we didn't organize that space. So let's, oh, let's yeah. have a space. Let's have a space next week. Next week on yeah. oh, Thursday. Yeah. That, that's, the, that's the right time. So it will be yeah, an AMA. Mostly right? question Bring and answer. your questions. Uh, we brought a lot of new things with the last video and this video. 
Uh, don't hesitate to bring your questions. We'll be very happy to answer to them. We'll and, paste and the yeah. spaces, the spaces link again. So you remember how we have the link that was ready for spaces. Since it will be a spaces, we'll if it's a feedback idea, that's one thing. But if you want to ask a question for spaces, we'll post that link, share that with everyone in the community, and please join spaces. You don't have to be willing. Some people aren't willing to speak on the space, but I encourage you to. We're all friends. We're all family. We're all in this together. There is nothing but good ideas and good questions uh, that we'll have, and it's it's inspiring for everyone just uh, just to be there. Yeah. All right. See you later. Guys. All right. Bye. Saying goodbye See you later. Bye, I can't raise bye. my hand. <laughs> my mind's <laughs> on a mouse. There you go. All yeah. right. Bye now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>